earlier works, um, things like uh, the foundations of mathematics and logical investigations, uh, are attempts to do the kind of phenomenology which would establish the, um, the, the foundations in the universal structure of the self of mathematics. That is to say, of logic. You see, the foundations of logic. In fact, um, this uh, little book of Kant, uh, of Kant, of Husserl, uh, Phenomenology and the Crisis of Philosophy, actually contains two essays of his. Uh, one is entitled um, Philosophy as Rigorous Science. His point being that none of the other sciences is rigorous because none of them has underlying foundation that validates scientific method. Uh, not even logic does. Mathematics doesn't. Uh, so he's calling out for a philosophy which will establish those foundations. The second is called, um, um, let's see, full, no, the full title, Philosophy as Rigorous Science, let's see. Oh, I wrote it down, I wrote it down, let's see. Yeah, the crisis of European science and transcendental phenomenology. <laughs> now you can see what he's after there. The crisis, no adequate foundations. The whole thing's in danger of getting relativized. And transcendental phenomenology, yes, a phenomenology of the transcendental self which will arrest that process and establish adequate foundations. So, um, that's um, the overarching concern of Husserl. And um, it inspired a whole following of people. Inspired a whole following of people. Uh, I remember back in the, uh, when would it be? Oh, in the 1960s, I guess it was. Um, I attended a meeting of the Society for Phenomenology and Existential Philosophy uh, out at Yale. And um, uh, that meeting, as people were standing around in the lobby of the uh, meeting place, um, uh, people would come up to you assuming that you were um, of like mind with them and rave in almost messianic tones about um, the project they were involved in. Um, increased numbers from last year, it looks like we're gaining ground. Uh, that, that, that sort of thing, a, a real um, messianic kind of spirit to it that was uh, sort of uh, fascinating to catch that enthusiasm, which um, it's almost a religious enthusiasm. It was interesting to see. Well, um, Hegel, pause for comment. Hegel, Husserl, pause for comment, question. Okay, you'll find that um, Stumpf is uh, pretty clear on this. Uh, he's also good on Heidegger, so um, be sure to, to use that. Now, let me uh, take then the next step from Husserl to Heidegger himself. And here in Heidegger, you have not transcendental phenomenology, phenomenology of the transcendental self, but existential phenomenology, phenomenology of existence. Heidegger is no longer concerned to establish a new kind of foundationalism. That's not his project. The problem with Husserl is that that process of bracketing is never completed. So that you simply cannot strip the transcendental self bare 
of the evidence of this, that, or the other kind of object of knowing, and catch it, as it were, in its bareness. It's as if um, Heidegger is saying to Husserl what Hume said to Descartes or Locke, who had talked about uh, having a notion of a substantive soul, even uh, over and above all of the particular ideas of sensation and reflection and everything else of which we're immediately aware. Uh, to which uh, Hume replied, I never catch myself without some idea. Yes, sir. Well, it's as if um, Heidegger is saying the same to Husserl. You never catch the hyphen without the object. You, see, you never catch the intentional state, bare, unclothed with objects. And so um, he has to part company with Heidegger's optimism about a method of establishing some rigorous foundation, new foundationalism. Um, incidentally, I think Heidegger's right in that. Um, it seems to me that um, any attempt you might make to bracket presuppositions, um, bracket reference to some particular object, is um, going to be very difficult. It's a kind of um, abstraction, thinking of the hyphen relationship in abstraction. Uh, but the very nature of thinking abstractly, uh, abstract ideas, is that it always takes off from particulars. And such particulars become symbols of something much greater than that. Yes, sir. So that the, uh, the difficulty involved there is the difficulty in abstract thinking that does not have some point of reference which makes um, possible uh, meaningful symbolic language. Um, well, instead then of what uh, Husserl is doing, what Heidegger uh, proposes to do is to use this um, phenomenological method of describing structures of things, uh, to use this on conscious existence, on human existence, to a phenomenology of human existence. Uh, that is to say, what um, Husserl's method involved was not only the bracketing, but I see I rubbed it off, eidetic intuition. Eidetic having to do with um, ideas, where idea, you remember, was Plato's term for the forms, the ideals, the universals, the essences. So eidetic intuition is an immediate awareness of those universal essences of the universal structures of consciousness. And what um, Husserl was wanting to do was to describe what one finds, what one observes uh, in that eidetic intuition, like intentionality. Well, what um, Heidegger wants to do is to focus not on um, some universal structure of consciousness underlying all knowing, but to focus on um, universal structures of, um, of existence, uh, what um, are called existentialia. Existentialia. Now, what he's trying to do is to distinguish categories of objects distinguish categories of objects from the existential qualities of the human subject. Let's see, what are the universal existential characteristics of being in this world? Existential referring to the conditions of the 
subject in as well. So that the hyphen becomes not a knowing relationship, but a being in relationship with all the existential qualities that that entails. Now, at the same time as he's dissatisfied with Husserl, he's also, he also has problems with other existentialists, people like Nietzsche, even Jaspers. He refers to all sorts of them. Because what they are doing, um, he uh, calls simply the elucidation of existence. Yeah, they're trying to elucidate the way in which we feel, the way in which we experience our existence, the elucidation of our existence. Oh, they may be trying to elicit some authentic existence, the elucidation and eliciting of existence. In, in other words, what they're doing is abandoning any traditional philosophical activity. The um, traditional philosophy, all the way back to the Greeks, was concerned with being, capital B. Not just elucidating our existence in the world. Um, so that the Greeks were interested in the arche, the basic stuff. Uh, if you like, in the ground of all being. You see? In the ground of being. So what Heidegger wants to do is to look at our... Oh, incidentally, this ground of all being is known as Sein, being itself, as distinct from being for me, being itself. And our existence, our being in the world, is design. Okay. So what Heidegger wants is to do a phenomenological description of design, our being in the world, to see if the ground of being, being itself, the ground of being appears you see, is present to us in our design, in our being in the world. Can we gain then some understanding, some awareness of the ground of being from probing our own being in the world? Uh, for instance, um, he has, um, let's see, he has a piece called What is Metaphysics? That was published in 1929. What is Metaphysics? Where he says, of course, it's about sein, being, rather than design. And then he goes about um, asking um, questions that have existential moment. Why is there something rather than nothing? Good question. Why is there something rather than nothing? And he tries to capture the existential moment of that question. Um, as if you are hanging over the edge of a cliff a bottomless precipice. <laughs> and on the edge of nothingness, they're asking, 